Hello, welcome to In Studio. I'm Ian M. Butterfield. In this video, I'm going to talk through some of the problems I had with a corrupt Lightroom catalog and how I managed to recover it. Last week, I discovered my Lightroom catalog containing the processing information for 205,000 images was corrupt. Not only was it corrupt, but I couldn't um, repair it using the standard tools and I discovered my backup was out of date. I didn't actually panic because I knew I'd set Lightroom up in a particular way, which should this sort of unfortunate situation occur, that I would be able to recover from it. So in this video, I just want to go through how I have Lightroom set up what happened to cause the failure and how I recovered from it and some of the general lessons that I learned from it. And the aim is such that if the unfortunate situation happens to you and you, you also end up with a corrupt catalogue, you'll know what to do about it. But prior to that, you'll know how to set your system up in a way such that you would be able to recover from it. So first of all, let's start by just looking at and talking about the, the hardware setup uh, that I use. I have um, a particular setup here uh, with the computer system where all my hard drives are in hot swappable drives. I mean, as you can see, I've got um, four in the main computer um, system and two external uh, devices uh, which uh, also have uh, have discs in there. I have a dedicated drive uh, for Lightroom and that drive is a caddy which has in it an SSD and it's on that drive that I store the, the Lightroom uh, catalogue database pop that back. Uh, in the external units I've got um, uh, discs, two discs for photographs and two discs are effectively a, a mirror of those ca uh, containing backup copies of all my photographs so that if a photograph disc fails I've got information uh, on the duplicate. There is a, a general backup disc uh, which um, uh, contains a copy of the uh, the Lightroom catalog and that get back gets backed up uh, it should be on a weekly basis it should actually be more frequent than that uh, unfortunately I'd had a, a very busy week and the, the backups hadn't run uh, so they were out of date so that's the the actual hardware uh, setup uh, that I've got I'll um, turn the PC on and I'll show you how that looks from a, a software point of view and how I've configured Lightroom uh, using that hardware setup. So I've now powered the PC up. Let me show you uh, how things are configured from a PC perspective. Well, we can see here all the different disks I've got. The most significant disks that we need to know about is the L drive here, which is the solid state drive, which just contains my Lightroom catalog. It's on a solid state drive for speed. The photos themselves are contained on two of the other external drives, uh, which is Photos 1 and Photos 2. All those drives are mirrored and backed up. So Photos 1 backup, Photos 2 backup, General Backup 1 contains within it a folder called Lightroom Drive and that's a, a com just a complete copy of the, um, of the Lightroom disk and inside there under Lightroom DB um, we have a folder called Backups and it was that backup that I was uh, that I ended up going back to. The problem was it was two weeks old. So that wasn't a problem because I'd configured Lightroom in a particular way. Let me show you how I'd configure that. I'll just move over to my newly restored um, backup and show you how, I'd, uh, how I had it configured. The key factor is here on the 
um, uh, the, the preferences. So it's under catalog settings and metadata. And the option that needs to be set is this automatically write changes to XMP. That means whenever you do a change to an image, the, uh, the edit data and the information explaining what settings you have changed in Lightroom for that particular image is written out to the image itself. So if it's um, a raw file, it's written actually to a, a .xmp file alongside it, a sidecar file. If it's um, a DNG uh, or a, a JPEG or something that it is allowed to write to, it will put it in a, a special area of the file, so it's protected. And that contains all the processing information. Why is that important? Well, we'll see in a short while. If you bring images back into the catalog, which uh, have already been edited and the XMP data has been saved, then uh, that information is reapplied back in the catalog uh, and back in, uh, in Lightroom. So you don't lose your edits. So that's the setup that I've got. So what went wrong? Well, I've already mentioned that uh, Lightroom, I have it on um, a solid state drive. And the reason for that is I can take it out of the caddy, as you saw, and I can attach it to an external caddy, or rather, really just the connections of it, plug that into my laptop, and I can work with that catalogue uh, on the laptop when I'm away from home. I was going away for a few days, so that's what I'd done. I dejected it connected it onto this. What I discovered while I was out and about was, you probably can't see this, but that lead is incredibly loose. And the reason it's loose is this connector here is um, actually come off on the, uh, on the circuit board. The problem is not all of the connections have broken. So it was sort of working. And what I think's happened is that basically it's corrupted the data uh, on the hard drive, which meant that my catalog was uh, pretty much unrecoverable. Let me show you what happened when I, I tried to open that catalog. I've got a, a copy of the, uh, of the, uh, the catalog from that, uh, that time. So let's move over to it. So here we are, this is a copy of a catalog called Master Catalog uh, dash fail, just so that I know it's the, uh, uh, the one that is gonna fail. So if I try to open that catalog, it says, right, where it's detected um, an error with it. It cannot be used or backed up until it's repaired. So the obvious thing to try is to repair the catalog and away the repair goes, it gets to about this point, and then we have a failure. And it says it can't be repaired, uh, so go back to one of your backups or open a different catalogue. So it tells me I need to open a, a backup. Well, as I mentioned, my backup is two week, weeks out of date. And in that time, I've done a fair bit of work. But because I'd set that right changes to XMP, it meant that I could recover that work because it is there, it's saved in the XMP files. So I'm going to open the, uh, the backup, a copy of that backup catalog and show you the process I used to bring the catalog back up to date and how I uh, recovered all the work. So I've uh, recovered the, uh, the catalog file into a folder and I've now opened it in Lightroom. Let's have a look at uh, what the next stages are to recover the lost data. So the first thing we can see here is the fact that my processing only goes as far or the files I have imported it only go as far as July. It's now, well, towards the end of, um, of August. So the entirety of August is, uh, is missing. So I need to bring that back. And it would be nice to have all the information that uh, I'd done to those images. So let's go to import. 
So if I go into the import um, menu first of all and select a source of well, I'm just going to do one. There's a whole load here from uh, from August, but for the sake of the video, I'm just going to include uh, Liam there. And it shows me the files. And all I need to do is to select Add. Uh, so I'm adding them in the correct location. This is on my Photos disk here, Photos 2. So they're already in the right place. I just need to make sure that Lightroom knows about those images. Do I want to apply any develop settings? No, because I don't want to overwrite the settings from when I first processed them in the previous version of the catalogue. Um, do I want to overwrite the metadata? Well, that's not a problem because the metadata that I specify here is only my copyright information. So I'm quite happy for that to be, uh, to be put in there and to be added back in. So let's say OK to that and import. So let's let those come into the catalogue. Now, as they're coming in, you'll notice that the images start to change. Keep an eye particularly on this image here, because what will happen to that is that should become a black and white image with a slightly different crop. Will it happen? Well, we're looking at the little progress bar up at the top here. It takes a little while. If necessary, I'll just fast forward the video to, uh, to this point. I'd rather not, rather just let it run so that you can see the change actually happen. I'll just give it another couple of moments. What's actually going on here, if I press the LR, if I click on the LR, you can see the task. There we go, it's just happened. The processing settings, including the black and white, have all happened to that image. Look down at the metadata. I'll go to my own view on metadata, which is IMB metadata view. You see a little bit more information. And you can see all the information about uh, the, and this is captioning I put in while I was working in Lightroom, uh, who it is, who the shoots of, where it took place, and all that sort of information is in there. So those files are recovered. They weren't in the database, but because I'd set that all important, um, XMP, uh, save XMP to um, metadata to XMP, because I'd set that, when I pulled those files back in, the information was recovered. So what about files where they are already in the catalogue, but I'd done some processing on them, and that processing isn't reflected in here? Well, let's have a look at some of those files. Looking over um, in uh, the, the list of images here, I had done some work for a client at, uh, at Birmingham Airport. So let's look at the images here. And you can see that some of them have got pics on them, have ratings. As I go down, however, you'll find that a lot of these files don't have any information. If I just change the size of those thumbnails, I just need to move that over, make the thumbnails a little bit smaller. And you can see towards the end of this shoot, there's just no processing information, although they are files I had done work on. The database knows nothing more about them. So what can I do to, uh, to solve that problem? Well, the important thing is, again, it's all down to that XMP data that, uh, that's written out to the, uh, to the image file. So if I can pull that information back, then hopefully we will get the settings back and the processing work. Now, how do I know that the information's there? Well, let's have a look at this. If you see here, we've got this little icon which shows an arrow going up and it says metadata was changed externally. So that's an image that I'd done work on um, and I'd written the data out. I want to get that information back. I can simply click on that icon. It says, gives me the option to either put the, um, the data that's in Lightroom onto the file or to import it from the, um, the file on disk. I want to import it. So if I import that, 
hopefully, yep, there you can see that the image changes colour, everything's straightened up uh, and that is an image that uh, I've done work on. So that's been recovered. Now what I actually want to do is I want to do it for all the images that uh, are here. So let's search for those and find all the ones I need to do that task on. So let's go up to the metadata filter at the top here and if we choose let me find this metadata status as a filter and we've got a number of options here we've got ones which say changed on disk and ones which say up to date for this particular folder so the ones which are let's just look at the ones which are changed on disk it will load that in a moment 70 odd of them 77 of them so if i use Control a to highlight all of those press the up arrow button on here it will read in that data import that data from disk for all of those so what we'll find now is that list up here should go down and we should uh, start to see the images changing so we've got 74 70 of them now it's actually going through them obviously dis removing them from the uh, from the display here so they're all disappearing off the list if i just come out of that uh, filtered view it'll carry on working with the ones i've selected but we'll start to see over here you can see all of the the information is now coming back the star ratings the purple colors uh, that i've flagged them with all that information is coming back so my processing uh, has been saved uh, simply because of that particular setting and I can go through and, uh, and sort out the images that way so those are the the key lessons from this first of all make sure you have a backup it would have been far easier if my backup was up to date when you exit from Lightroom it gives you uh, an option with the backups to say typically it's once a week says please do you want to do this backup do the backup I didn't do it uh, on a regular basis I relied on the other process that I use which is just making the copy of the disk to another disk and it's worked I mean don't get me wrong the, the process has worked but it would have been so much simpler if I'd have had a more up-to-date backup than the one I got. The biggest advantage of using the Lightroom backup instead of just doing relying on the disk copy is that the Lightroom backup will always test the integrity of the backup uh, of the, the catalog and it will re-optimize your, your catalog as well for performance uh, reasons. Uh, so you, you gain other benefits as well by doing it that way. So the steps, let me just run through the steps of what you need to do to protect yourself from um, this sort of disaster. Well, first of all, in your main catalogue, set the option to write XMP data uh, out to disk automatically. And you can find that option here on the, uh, again, just want to emphasize this, edit preference uh, catalog settings and it's on the metadata tab and it's automatically write changes to xmp that's the first thing you need to do next thing you need to do back up your catalog regularly make sure that those backups by default it will put them in a subfolder to your where your current full, um, catalog is don't take that option put it to a separate drive because if like me you screw the whole drive up that catalogue is also going to be corrupt as well um, I actually found that when I copied catalogues onto this drive they were they became corrupt so it's a duff drive now it's a brick um, so don't save your backups to the same drive uh, do them regularly then if something goes wrong with a catalogue 
Lightroom will give you the option to attempt to repair it. You've got nothing to lose at that stage by attempting to repair. So repair the catalogue. Chances are it might fail. In fact, there's a pretty good chance it will fail. Um, in which case then bring back your latest catalogue off disk, off your backup disk. You will be able to look at that and know what files are no longer in the catalogue. Go into import and in import as I have here you can just simply select a folder in there set it to add and then uh, bring it in and the, the settings will be brought back. The only thing you will lose is if you created any virtual copies, you will lose that. The other bizarre thing that you lose is actually the pick status. If you've used uh, color, flag, um, color labels or star ratings, those will come back, but pick flags won't. So uh, sorry about that. Um, that's the um, Those are the main things, so you'll get that back. Next, any folders that you know you have worked on, I'll just, again, I would be able to see which have updates on the disk which aren't in the catalogue, and by just clicking on that little icon, I can bring that information back. And you can set um, a filter to be able to, um, uh, to locate those images there, that way. So that's how you recover a corrupt Lightroom catalogue. I hope that you never have to do it. But if you do, follow those steps and hopefully you won't lose any work. So thanks for watching this, um, this video cast. It's a, a little bit unusual. And um, uh, do stay tuned, subscribe to my, uh, my newsletter and subscribe to, the, uh, to this video channel uh, for, uh, for future information and photography hints and tips. And as ever, thanks for watching and keep making great photographs. Bye-bye.